Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. My God. Have your way this morning there, Daddy Jesus. Done. Let your will be done for your glory and your glory alone. Hallelujah. Jesus. Mm. My God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. You have done it one more time, oh Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, to honor you, to adore you, to praise your name, to tell you thank you, to bless you, to magnify you, Jesus, it is well with our soul. It is well. We thank you, Lord, for another day. Jehovah, you are God. And we thank you for waking us up this morning to see the sunrise. We pray today against distraction. We pray, Lord God, that the, it, this day will be a day to remember. We pray that goodness and mercy will continue to follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in your house, Lord God, forever. We thank you for this day that you have granted us, that you have given us. We are walking on our grave. We are thankful. We are grateful. We didn't need help to get out of bed this morning. And Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We worship you. It is well with our soul. We give in thanks, Lord God, to you. There is no one like you. There is none like you, Lord. So we worship you. We lift you on high. You are lifted up right now. You are high and lifted up. And there is none like you, Jesus. Today we pray, Lord God, for those who are sick. We pray healing. For those who are broken, Lord God, we pray that they will be comforted. For those who are in bondage, oh God, we pray that they will be released. We declare a release in the atmosphere for those who are mourning, Lord God. Wipe their tears. Bring joy to their heart. Lord, we ask you for peace. Everlasting peace like a river. Peace in my home. Peace in my family's home. Peace in the homes of each and every one that is here with us today. Peace in the homes of the ones that will view this broadcast at a later time. We cry out for peace. Let there be peace among us. Let peace dwell among us today, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Someone didn't sleep last night. They had no peace. Jesus. Someone is in pain. Lord, we are asking for healing. We are asking for deliverance. We are asking for breakthrough. Lord, we are asking for a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We say thank you in advance, Lord God. We know you will do it. You have done it before. We know you will do it again. We come against every distraction. Anything that will be a burden, Lord, we are asking you to move it. Ah, 
anyone that will be a burden to us, Lord God, we're asking you to move them. Jesus, have your way. Have your way, oh God. Jesus, my God. David, oh, satire. Let it be well. Let it be well with us as we come before your presence with singing, knowing that you are God and you're good. You who have made us and not we ourselves. We are your people. We are the sheep of your pastors. And Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and your mercies towards us. Your mercies are new every morning. And great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Jesus. Great is your faithfulness towards us. Morning by morning. New mercies I see. All I have needed. You have provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Great is your faithfulness. My God. Great is your faithfulness. Jesus. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning. New mercies are seen. All I have needed, your hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I've seen. Yes, Jesus, all I have needed, your hands have provided. Lord unto me. Thank you, Jesus. Great is your faithfulness towards us. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your goodness, and your mercies. You said your mercies are new every morning. We thank you, Daddy Jesus, for what you have done. Look at what the Lord has done done oh lord when we look around us and and we see your beauty the beauty of your holiness when we look outside lord god we praise you when i look at the mountains and i look at the valley lord i look at the sea you are good you are good you are good you are lord and you are good Great is your faithfulness towards us. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Hey, hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness towards us. New mercies we have seen every day. All that we need, your hands have given it unto us. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto us. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he have done. Great things he have done and greater things he is about to do. Unto the Lord be the glory. Jesus, you are good. Ah, thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Look at what the Lord has done. Look at your children. Look around you. Look where you live. Look what God has done for you. There was a time in your life when you desired this life. Let us give God thanks for it. There was a time in our life when we desired to be right where we are. There was a time 
when we pray to God to give us this life, look at what the Lord has done. There was a time in our life when things were bad. And we said, Lord, only if we could just be at that place for a moment to see what it feels like. Lord, we are thankful. We are grateful. Oh, we shall back you today. Oh, we worship you today. Oh, we bless you today. Oh, we magnify you today. Oh, we lift your name on high and we exalt your holy name. There was a time in our life when we desire to be where we are. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Thank you, Jesus. Many times we have outgrown our spot. We have outgrown our space. And we desire to have more. But Lord, right now we thank you for where we are. We are thankful. We desire a big place to stay. We desire a better place. We desire a more, a, a, more, a more wider space. And Lord God, we are thankful for where we are today. There was a time when we didn't have what we have here today. And we desire it. And you have granted us the desires of our heart according to the word of God. And we say thank you Jesus. We decree and we declare it is well with us. We are not where we want to be. We are not at the place that we are supposed to be. Our spiritual life is not where it's supposed to be. But Lord, we are in a better place than where we used to be. And we thank you. We thank you for where you are taking us. We thank you for the people that you are sending in our direction. We thank you, Lord God, for spiritual guidance. We thank you, Jesus, for our struggles. We thank you for the, the setbacks. Lord, we thank you for the hurdles. Lord, we thank you for the mountains that's before us. It keeps us praying. Oh, God, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we praise you. We magnify you and we adore you. We lift your name on high because you are high and exalted. And there is none like you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for El Shaddai prayer tower. Lord, we thank you that we are able to come out this morning to worship you, to fellowship. Oh, Lord, we thank you that we are able to come in agreement to declare it is well. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the enemy tried everything, but he couldn't stop us. The enemy tried to shut us down, but it didn't happen. And Lord, we give you honor and we give you praise. The enemy tried to hold us back, but it's not happening. Lord, we say thank you for where we are today. We thank you, Lord God, for prayers that have been answered and lord we thank you for the ones that you didn't answer my god we thank you for the things that we ask you for and you say no lord god we thank you for the people that you are moving from among us lord we thank you for the ones that you are bringing oh god we thank you for the doors that you are opening for us and we thank you for the doors that you have closed thank you jesus we bless you today come on holy spirit we welcome you now, Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to join us. To take over. Take full control. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way. Let your will be done. Holy Spirit, we welcome you now. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and take over in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come. We invite you to come. We invite you to come and take charge. We surrender all to you. Withholding nothing. We hold nothing back from you today, Daddy Jesus. You said you will remove our shame. You said we shouldn't remember the shame of our youth. The shame of our youth. The things that we did in the past. Lord God, that was not That was not pleasant for the eyes or the ears. Lord, you said you took care of it. And we're asking the Lord God, give us the strength to be better. To do better. 
to live well among our siblings, to live well among our brethren, to live well among those that you send our direction. Oh God, make us better. Jesus, make us over. Make us over, Lord God, creating us a clean heart and give us the right spirit. Oh Jesus, cast us not away from your presence. Cast us not away, Lord God. And we ask you not to take the Holy Spirit from us. Restore unto us the joy of your salvation. Oh God, so we can worship you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, I present your people before you. Let your will be done. I present your people before you. I commit everyone that is here today in your hands. Every soul that is watching today, Lord God. I commit them in your hands. I commit them in your care. I commit them before your Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, breathe afresh upon them. Let it be well with your people. In the batuka da baka sataya. Obando korobo koshadabaya. Ye de bebe bebe kosoto. Let it be well with your people. Touch their lips, O oh God. Remove everything that is not of you from them, Lord God. Isaiah said, I'm not qualified to be in your presence because I swear and my friends swear. And Lord God, I ask you today to touch the lips of the people that are connected to this ministry. Touch their lips. Purge them from everything that is not good. Oh God, have your way. Let it be well with them. Touch the hearts of the evil one today, O oh God. Let there be no evil manifestation in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We command every spirit that is not of God to be under subjection to the Holy Spirit. O oh God, we destroy every territorial spirit today. We come up against it. Every territorial spirit. We come up against it in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of envy and jealousy. We place you under subjection. We stand upon you today. Envy and jealousy. Malice and pride. Today we trample upon you. Oh God. Let them never look upon us with a bad eye. Let those that look upon us, let it be for a blessing and never a curse. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray with thanksgiving. Even now, O oh God, I cover myself in the blood. I cover myself in your blood. Speak to me, Lord God, to your people. Let it be well with them. Heal every broken heart today. And those that are in pain, Lord God, we cry out for healing. For those who are in spirit of lack, oh Lord, we ask you to provide for them. Let it be well with them. Bless them with good things. Bless your people today with good things. Open financial doors for those who are struggling with lack. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Give wisdom to those who lack wisdom. Knowledge and understanding to those who are in need. You said if any man lack wisdom, let him ask. But Lord, you said we should, whatever we ask, we should pray for understanding. Get understanding. So Lord God, I ask you to rest the spirit of understanding upon this ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Happy Sunday to all. Welcome, everyone. Mm. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Welcome, good morning, good morning, wherever you're connecting from. I invite you to just take a moment and share this message. Good morning, Sister Raquel. God bless you, Sister Kathy. Hallelujah. Welcome, Sister Lorraine, Sister Keisha, 
Sister Julene, Sister Ayasin, I miss you all. Amen. Glory to God. I miss each and every one of you. I wish each and every one of you were there to accompany me over in Italy. All I brought back is love because Italy is a place of love, especially in Venice. Amen. Welcome, Sister Darrett. Welcome. God bless you, Sister Camille. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Michelle Chambers. Welcome. God bless you. We give God honor and praise. Hallelujah. I know I've been out for a couple of days. I'm here to, to, to confess. As you all know that I'm complaining, I need to start going back to the gym and work out. Sister Shelly Ann, welcome. God bless you. Sister Jackie out there in New Jersey, welcome. Yes, um, I, I had some serious moments in Italy where I broke down because it's a lot of walking. One of the day, it was 10 miles we walked that day. 10 miles for tour and for walking. Listen, it's not the walking that bothers me. It's my inability to walk. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But you know what? I lost a little weight. I went on the scale this morning and I had a good report. I lost a few pounds. Amen. So I thank God for the exercise. I was pushed to my limit and it's a good feeling. You know, I told my peers, those that were with me, I said, listen to me, don't mind me not coming so fast. I'm coming. And I, I apologize for my tardiness, but my knees hurt. I thank God that I was able to do it. The last tour, the very last Tour. was it the last tour no the second to last tour i couldn't make it up the steps to enter and a beautiful church out there in tuscany in italy but i thank god on the last day we toured the saint mark's church the, the saint the saint mark's basilica that's what they call the churches where you know the the um the apostles visited the basilica so it was a blessing yes sister tessa god bless you too i'm thankful to god that i am back home safe i'm i'm gonna take better care of my health this only goes to show that i need a coach to work out with so people of god listen pray my strength i need to exercise more I couldn't do all those walks and I saw young people holding back you know what the last news I received that don't worry there was a lady they had to bring her her asthma pump while she was climbing the steps it's you know and I thank God for the ex it's all exercise the experience was great but it was mostly exercise and I'm thankful to God every day I was in a different church I, I just love what the Lord did Every day I was into a different church. Amen. I, I went to tour a different church. And I'm thankful to God. It's a blessing. People of God, listen. We're going to have to uh, do this. But I think we should first go to Israel. When the weather is good. So I'm going to have to go searching for all the legalities that we need to visit israel uh, on a tour you know i have tour guide it's not free we have to pay for all of that everything we have to pay for but it is well worth it a lot of education amen each tour they educate us about the churches about the different places we have been but first and foremost good morning good morning hartford connecticut let us get into the word of god welcome happy sunday i'm back and i am doing well you know it is well god is faithful and uh, it's always a blessing to travel to another place to visit another church amen it was all church even when we went to tuscany they had that uh vineyard the end of that Tuscany tour was at a church. Amen. So this is what God is doing in this time. 
listen to me people of god please don't look out of a jealous eye look at it as oh so the lord allowed her to go there to come back with things that we need that we that she will impart don't look out of a jealous eye when someone do, is doing something for the ministry don't look from a don't speak from a place of jealousy each and every one of us we have jealous spirit don't let it manifest amen hallelujah don't speak from a place of jealousy a lot of people have been to rome and they didn't do a tour they walk in and they look and they you know they pay attention to stuff but honestly what the lord did yes what the lord did it was for the ministry well the setback that i had was walk limping and walking slow but i did what i was supposed to do and i thank god i know many of you were back here praying for me i know brother devon was praying i know a few people that are not even writing a note on social media they are holding me up in prayer seriously we have a lot of intercessors in el shaddai prayer tower amen so i pray that you will one day get an opportunity to visit churches not just a country but churches and hear the stories of the things that are in the bible it will come to life amen the nuggets i call this the whatever is in the bible these are the nuggets that we need but one when, when you go to those places then things will begin to make a lot of sense to you a lot of people don't understand the scriptures but when you travel and you start to read it will make sense it will add up it will yes it will the puzzle will begin to fit hallelujah so whatever the lord allow me to absorb i will share as the time goes by many of you you lived the whole trip through my eyes because I made little clips everywhere I went didn't have enough network as soon as I get connected to a Wi-Fi boom I'll send a picture or something and that was more than enough amen hallelujah we thank God now I invite you to open your Bible this morning we're going to Yes, we are going in the Word. I'm opening the Bible this morning to Exodus chapter 2. Open a Bible to the book of Exodus chapter 2. Welcome everyone. Welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. And as we go along, I'll just give you little pieces of some of the things that, are, that make sense. Not everything, not everything I will say, because not everything was sensible but the ones that made sense i absorbed amen sometimes we have to overlook some things because sin is everywhere even in today's world many of us are struggling with sin we are struggling with things that will lead us to sin we are hanging around with people that are dwelling in sin and the bible tells us in the book of psalm chapter 1 verse 1 Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. If you really want to live good and be blessed, stop telling ungodly people your business. Stop get, taking advice. You see, a lot of us, we are saying that God is not blessing us. What, God, what is taking God so long? If you really sit down and check, your best friend is not saved. If you really sit down and check the person that you are confiding in, about your future this person don't know god not everybody who is baptized know god not everybody who runs their mouth know god some people don't even read the word of god they don't understand so i'm here to let you know if you really want to see the hand of god first things first stop giving out your personal information to someone who is not living their life to please god a lot of people are baptized and they are not being fed the word. They are not fed. So all they remember is things of old that their grandparents and their great, great, great grandparents used to do, which is not of God. So those people, you cannot 
expect to get good advice from them or sound advice. The Bible said, blessed is the man that walketh not in ungodly counsel. It doesn't matter how nice this person is. Don't take counsel from them if they are not living godly life. I'm not throwing any stones out there. I'm dropping nuggets in your spirit to let you know the reason why your breakthrough is taking so long. Many of you, your best friend is not saved. It's true. Many of you, the person that you love the most, you're holding on to. And you know, unfortunately, let me say this, many times it's a spouse. The spouse is not saved. And you confide in your spouse. You tell your spouse everything. And as soon as you open your mouth and share it, it goes out the window. Because you didn't tell someone to pray about it. You tell them so they could go gossip and curse it. So be careful who you share your dreams with. People are cursing your dreams so it cannot be reality. The Bible said when you do these things, you are not being blessed. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm praying that you and your spouse can be equally yoked. Can be on the same page. You know, the, why do you think the God said, two shall be in the bed and one will be taken away? Yes. Mean that they were not on the same page. One is unsaved. So be careful of what you're doing. You're sharing serious information with people who are not even, they don't hold you in regards. They don't respect the fact that you, you love God and you are walking with God on your spiritual walk, your journey. They will step on your, they will crush you. You share this information with them and they crush you because they don't know God. Hallelujah. They will crush you. You're saying it out of a place of love. But while you are telling them, may, you know how many people God used me to counsel and what they are telling me is that they share their dreams with their friend and the friend went ahead and do the exact thing and then cut them off. The devil is a liar. I pray that your eyes will be opened. Turn your Bible to the book of Exodus chapter 2 and verse 23. I'm going to read. It says, And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage and they cried. And their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. So you see, when you are going through hardship, God is listening cry out to him cry out to God he is listening he said my ears is not deaf there are some of us to be honest don't don't trust anyone it doesn't matter how many scriptures they know some people will not share information with their pastor because as soon as they share it then the pastor use it to preach a sermon so a lot of people said I'm not telling my pastor any of my business because my pastor talked too much. A lot of people share this information from different ministries and they come and they say, I can't tell my pastor this because my pastor will talk about it. So you see, I understand. I understand. The Bible said, trust the people that know God, that are walking with God. But many of the people that are walking with God are parrots. They chatterbox you call them they don't keep anything they're like an old refrigerator they can't keep water they leak out you share something with them in confidence and then they have their best friend to share it with the bible said the children of israel cry out to god because they were in bondage and god hear them because of what they were going through the pain the pain good morning <coughs> The pain. <coughs> Excuse me. The pain. Because of the pain. The Bible said. 
and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage that they were in, the pain. <coughs> Excuse me. Their pain. The word of God said, and God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with their forefathers. Who were their forefathers? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God looked upon their children, upon the children of Israel and had respect unto them. <laughs> Amen. The Bible said God look upon them. We are in the book of Exodus chapter 2. God look upon them. He remember the covenant that he had with your forefathers. Many times, many of you got open a door and you're saying that because you pray. No, God remember covenant with your forefathers. The things you, many of you don't pay tithes. No, you don't. You don't know the meaning and you don't have any, have any interest. You don't care about these things. You don't pay offering. You don't sow seeds into your issue. You don't prove God. You don't try to prove him. You tell everybody else your problem except praying to God. Hallelujah. No, the word of God here is telling us. Jesus. That they cry to God. And by reason of the condition, by reason of their condition, God remember them. By reason of the bondage, remember God told the Abraham about the bondage. Yes, it was told to Abraham. But God remember the covenant. He remember the covenant. The Bible said, God heard your groaning and he remembered his covenant, his promise. Many times because we are walking in, in, in power, walking in miracle, walking into victory, we think it's because of our prayers. No! It's because of our fourth parents that were sowing seeds, paying tithes, and doing good to other people. Nowadays we are so evil and jealous and bitter and wretched. And ratchet. We don't do the things of God anymore. And yet. We want all the blessings. We are praying against other people's prayers. But we want God to bless us. How is God going to bless us. When we are speaking against other people and their children. God have nothing to do with some of us. <clears throat> it's true. Many of the good things that are happening in our life, it's because of our four parents. It's not because of us, because we are calling ourselves child of God, but we are still walla, wallowing in sin. We are double dabbling in sin. We are still hateful. We don't like our neighbors. Some people don't, they can't stand you. They live next door to you, but they can't stand you. And yet they want God to bless them. The Bible said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. We want God to bless us. We want the best of the best of everything that comes with living righteous. And we are living in sin. My God. Jesus. God remember his covenant. God heard them. God heard your cry. Because they were in bondage. But God remember. Who he make promise to. It mean that they were not squeaky clean. They were in bondage. They were not squeaky clean. So God remember what he said to Abraham. I'm going to bless those that bless you. I'm going to curse that will curse you. I'm going to bless you and give your generations to come. And they will be blessed. So you see whatever God said it's final. Today I pray. That anything that your parents couldn't finish, God will use you to finish it. Ah! It is my prayer that anything that your parents... Somebody go ahead and share this message. I invite you to share this message. It is my prayer that anything... You know what? Let me share something with you. On the street that my mother used to live, it has a dead end. It ends on the shore. 
in the water and on the ocean because she live on the beach <clears throat> and i'm saying this everyone that knew her knew that she loved the lord and i always ask this question does your neighbor know that you love god many of us our neighbor don't know anything about us all they hear us hear from us is swearing noise but what kind of noise are you making for your neighbors to hear it my god i'm gonna use my mother for example because she dead dead man don't tell any tales but someone is here on this platform today that knew that is from the same street that my mom used to live on the street that my mother lived they know she loved the lord they know she loved god they know what she stand for so i'm just staying close to home with this one where i live my neighbors know i love the lord they hear me preaching i'm not sociable i'm not friendly and that's just my personality if you read the bible carefully it tell you that elijah was not friendly jesus didn't have many friends the bible speak of one friend that jesus had and he died jesus had to go and wake up his friend from the dead because his friend died and when his friend came back from the dead people tried to kill him again to prove that jesus was fake People tried to kill Lazarus, Jesus' only friend. They tried to kill him again. He, the, Jesus didn't have many friends. When you are doing the work of God, people will follow you. But it's not supposed to be for friendship. It's supposed to be for what you stand for. Yes, not everybody will love you personally because the things of God is hard. To do the work of God is not easy. A lot of people are going to fight against you. But God is already fighting them. My God. Remember Abraham's nephew fought him. And fought his men. That was his nephew. His brother's son. We're talking Bible. We're talking Bible. If you really want to live your life to please God. A lot of people won't like you. You won't be likable. They might like the way you look, and that's it. Because once they get close to you, they can't stand you. You're too serious. They will tell you that you're extra. No, and you're not extra. You're just firm, stern, well-spoken, know who you are. My God. But I'm here with the word, with the word of God. According to the Bible, it says, when you cry to God, he will answer you. God looked upon the children of Israel and he had respect for them. Not because of who they were, but because of the covenant he had with their forefathers. The covenant that God had with their forefathers. They cried to God. But whatever they cried to God, it was not the reason why God had respect for them. It's because of who they came from. Many times the reason why we are still alive is because of the prayers that those people prayed for us. Jesus. Say that again one more time, Sister Michelle. Say that again one more time, Sister Michelle Chambers. If you are weak, they crush you. Even some pastors out there will crush you. When you are doing God's work, there are pastors who, who are not delivered. They need deliverance just like a lot of people too. And they will come and try to crush you because of the work of the Lord that you are doing. When you are clean, if you are not careful, they crush you. This is why so many young pastors die. You have to be firm. You have to be vigilant. You have to be radical. Stand up for Jesus Christ. For whatever you believe. My God. Let us look at Psalm chapter 5. 
turn your Bible to the book of Psalms. We are still in the Old Testament. Psalm chapter 5. You are praying, but remember, it is the prayers and, and the covenant that your forefathers have with God while you are still alive. That's what the Bible just told us. God had respect for them because of the covenant that he had with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it was not just Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Esau, and Jacob. But two had to come out of the equation. So many times the people in your family, God don't want them in his business. He said, Jacob I love, but Esau I hate. And they were twins. They came out of the same, they came from the same umbilical cord. But God didn't like Esau because his heart was not in the right place. He tried to kill Jacob. And Jacob was chosen. My God, I don't know who God sent me here to talk to this morning. Turn your Bible to the book of Psalm chapter 5. Somebody says Psalms. So it's Psalm chapter 5. <clears throat> Hear this. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. Wilt thou compass him with a shield? Jesus of mercy. Psalm chapter 5 and verse 12. It's time to dig into the word of God. Yes. Psalm chapter 5. So you see when you're living righteous, God will shield you. The children of Israel, they were not all squeaky clean. They grumble, they murmur, they were greedy. They were unrighteous. But because of who they came from. Sometimes you see some children on the street. You want to slap them. And you say, you know what? If it wasn't for your mother. If it wasn't for your daddy. I would fix your business. But because your daddy is a good man. Or yes. Or because your mother is a good person. Yeah. Many times you see them on the street and they are misbehaving. You look at them. You want to shake them. You said to them, you know what? The reason why I can deal with you is because of your parents. I knew them. So many times we will get away with some stuff because of who our parents or our foot parents were. My God. The Bible tells us, it says, for, <laughs> for God bless the godly and surround them with a shield of love so when you're living righteous psalm 5 and verse 12 when you live righteous life god will shield you he will bless you and shield you with love my god he will bless you with favor jesus he will surround you with a shield of love According to the word of God. When you live right. When you live right. Abraham never made a mistake. He obeyed his wife. And things happen. He didn't make any mistake. Jesus. Glory to God. The word of God said. Walk in love. Walk by faith. And not by sight. It's time for us to stop walking by sight. The Bible said walk by faith. And not by sight. Walk in love. And treat people the way you want them to treat you. Many times we don't treat people well. Because we, we have a, a, a few extra dollars to spend. And we look down on people. The way you want them to treat you. You better treat them the same. The people that are beneath you. Oh Jesus. <laughs> if you want to experience God. Be obedient. 
Give to Caesar what is due unto Caesar. And give to God what is due unto God. Give to God what belong to God. Give to Caesar what is due to Caesar. I'm going to explain something. The Bible said, honor the Lord with your substance. According to Proverbs chapter 3. I'm here to let you know people of God. Any treatment you are expecting, make sure you give it. The way you treat others is the way God will treat you. Hallelujah. The way you treat people is the way God will treat you. So people who are beneath you, as like maybe they work for you or they are serving you. The way you treat your servant is the way God will treat you because you are a servant of God. So when people are serving you, treat them well. When God is showing you favor, it's unmerited. There is no limit. Oh Jesus, my God. Let us read the book of Proverbs chapter 3. Just skip. We are in. We are in. We just leave in from Psalms. So just flip over to Proverbs. The next book over. Proverbs chapter 3. Let us read it. It says. Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. And we all know what the first fruits is. The, if you have some, I love tomatoes and I plant it. And I don't know why I take pleasure in giving away the first set of tomatoes. When my tomato is ready, I will buy myself some tomato. And I will try to give away the first set of tomatoes that I pick are cucumbers or the callaloo that I plant I will try to find someone to give it to you see we have to honor God with our first fruits and the first of anything that you reap even if it's interest or your business the first crop that comes from it is called first fruit use it to honor God don't keep it to yourself so I'm telling you one of the reasons why I am being blessed is because whenever I'm reaping what I sow, I don't keep the first portion of it. I always find someone to give it to. And if I, if I don't get to do it, if I don't, I don't eat it, I stock it in the freezer because where I live, most of the people I know are far away from me. Right? So I will try to reap it and find someone to bless with it. I'm here to let you know this, this word is very powerful. Verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. If you have a business. And the first turnover that it turns over. If you receive a, a what you call it. A raise, a pay, a pay raise or a pay increase. The first portion of it, never keep it. If you really want to be blessed, never try to hold on to that first portion of it. Find a way to bless the ministry that you're a part of. My God. The Bible tells us, it said, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty. So when you give away the first portion, your barns will be filled with plenty. When you keep everything to yourself, I'm here to let you know it won't work. It is written, and whatever God said is final. My God. The word of God said, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy press shall burst out with new wine remember to take out what belong to god and set it aside i know this song like rev just come back from italy what is she talking about i'm telling you the word of god said if you really want to experience blessings stop trying to keep everything to yourself stop being greedy if you really want to experience God, hear people of God. It says, honor the Lord with thy substance. Pay your tithes. Be a blessing. Don't try to hold on everything for yourself and talk about rainy day. 
God, he is the provider. Everything belongs to God. He is the one that controls the rain that you are providing for. My God. When the weatherman said, we're going to have snowstorm. We will go to the grocery store and buy out all the food in the grocery store. But when somebody is sick, we don't come together and storm up heaven and declare healing. Ah! But we trust the weatherman. We trust the weatherman to go and spend out all the money and buy things. Some of them we end up throw it out because we don't need it. Many times when the weatherman tells us that it's gonna, we're having storm. We, you go to the grocery store, you spend this extra money and buy stuff. Many times it go bad on us. It's spoil. Why? We didn't need all of that. So we waste our money. All because a little bit of snow came for one day. We use our tides to go and buy all that stuff that we didn't need. We already had food, but we are preparing for the storm. We trust the weatherman. We don't trust God. When he said, honor him with our substance. My God. We don't trust him. But I'm here this hour to let you know. The Bible said, when you do so, so shall be oppressed. Your bonds be filled with plenty. And thy press shall burst with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Neither be weary if of his correction. Many of you are too tired of hearing me talk about living holy and righteous. He said, don't get weary of correction. Don't get weary. When God is telling you to live right. Don't get weary. You want to know? So, pastor, you don't see any other scripture in the Bible. Every time you come, you're telling us to repent. Repent! It's time to repent. To live clean. If you don't repent, you're not going to heaven. So it doesn't matter what you have. You're going to leave it and you're going to die prematurely unless you repent. I will always tell you to repent. Why? Jesus said repent and believe the gospel. And if Jesus said it, who are we not to repeat it? Ah, John the Baptist said repent for the remission of your sins. If someone really love you, they will beat you with the scriptures so you can get it. If someone really care for you, they will hammer you with the scriptures so you can get it. If someone really have your best interest, they will say, come let us study the word of God together. Instead of talking about other people. Blessed is the man that walketh not in ungodly counseling. Word of God said, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correct. So when you come here and you're getting correction, it's not to hurt you. It's not to expose you. It's not to ridicule you. It's not to harm you. It's for you to walk right, live righteously. Somebody I Help me just go ahead and share this message today. I'm looking for people to help me to share it. Share this with someone. If you really love your children, tell them the truth. Hey, I know that one go hard. If you really love your children, Jamaicans would say, if you really love your picnic, tell your picnic the truth. Tell your child the truth. If you really love your spouse, tell them the truth. If you really love your friends, tell them the truth. The word of God said, For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, and even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. We need to live right. 
We need to live clean. This is not a show. No, I am not an entertainer. My name is not Pastor Feel Good. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to pray for heaven to honor your request. Your godly request. Because many of us, the things that we are asking God for is not godly. Mm. Many of us, the things that we are asking God for is ungodly. It's not godly. And God don't answer those prayers. I remember one pastor said, the young man came to his church and he put a thousand dollars down for offering and asked the pastor, Pastor, just pray for my little drug business. Pastor said, get out of my face. You're asking me to pray for your drug business. I can't go to God. That's illegal. We need to know what to go to God about. So if you are doing something illegal, don't call me to ask me to pray over it for you. You already know it's illegal. Not, it doesn't matter how much I love you. God will beat me with many stripes. I will be only enabling you to continue to do what is wrong. The word of God never lie. God wants you to be blessed. God will give you what you deserve when you release to him. So he said, my God, honor him with your substance. And when you honor him with your substance, then your bonds will be filled with plenty. Release what is due unto God. Yes. Give God what is due unto him. No one, you know your situation more than anyone else does. No one is forcing you or holding a gun to your head. One of the things I found out. Everybody know about Rockefeller. In Manhattan. Rockefeller. Rockefeller. Oh my God. John Rockefeller. The American business mogul. The reason he said the reason for his success was because his mother taught him how to pay tithes. Jesus. Look up Rockefeller. John Rockefeller. That name will last forever. John Rockefeller. The man said the reason for his success because his mother taught him how to pay tithes. Many of us, we see people and they're living their life and we wonder what makes them successful, what makes them tick, what, what open all those doors. The man said he's tithing, his tithes. His mother taught him. So you see, it was something that was handed down to him. Oh, Jesus. Many of us, we move to the United States of America or we travel to the United States of America. And when you look, what is written on the money? God bless America. That's what it says, right? So now we're talking about one of the American businessmen. I'm not here to talk about stuff that's irrelevant. If you look on the money, it says God bless America. The man said his mother taught him how to pay tithes. And that's the reason for his success. Many of you are saying that you don't pay tithes. You don't even know how to pay tithes. You know what is tithing? You pay tithes so you can be blessed. You're not doing it for your pastor. You're not doing it for the ministry. You're doing it for yourself. I laugh many times. You know, I, I, I see some people and they are doing what they are doing. And I ask God to help them. Because they don't pay tithes. And yet they are telling you that they need a breakthrough. You don't need any breakthrough if you don't pay tithes. Because that's you, you're holding on to your breakthrough. You're eating your tithes. You're eating your blessing. Hallelujah. Your 10% of your income is your tithes. Many of you, you eat it, you spend it by food. 
And if you really pay your tithes, God will increase the other 90%. So this is why many churches don't force anyone to pay tithe because they don't want you to know that's where your blessing lies. They will tell you pay offering. They're not going to influence you to pay tithe. They're not going to direct you to the scriptures. Tithing is spiritual. It is. When Jacob ran away from home, before Jacob ran away from home, when Abraham got all his increase together, he paid tithes to Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a priest. He was next to God. He was God in the flesh. Then come Elijah. My God. So Abraham paid tithes. Isaac saw. He was a sower. This morning the Lord dropped a word in my spirit to give to a group. And while I was reading uh, um, in the book of Genesis where the Bible tells us that Isaac's wife, Rebecca, was barren. And when he prayed to God, she gave birth to twins, which was Jacob and Esau. But he was the one who prayed to God to open, his wife was barren, to open her womb. He was a sower. And his son Jacob, no, I'm not talking Esau. God never acknowledged Esau. Jacob, when Jacob robbed Esau and ran away from home, Jacob had that vision. And that day he said, when he got up, he said, whatever I receive, I will pay 10% out of it. So you see why God had covenant with his family. Because they respect the word of God. People of God, listen, if you really want to see success, once you have a job, pay your tithes. Rockefeller, remind people the reason for his success, the reason behind his success is because his mother taught him. And the richest part of New York, Rockefeller. I want you to know this. Many people don't know. There is, there is a lot of power behind you paying your tithes. You might be saying, I'm paying my tithes and I'm not seeing any blessing. You need to stop complaining and wait on God. And make sure you're paying it correctly. Many people say that they are paying tithes. and they are, Make sure you're paying your tithes correctly. Because giving is a gift. No one is forcing you to do anything. Some people... You're paying offering. You're not paying tithes. Even when you said it's tithes, we know it's offering. But pastors don't worry about it because it's your blessing, not the pastor. Remember that. If you move to a different ministry, you're moving with your bad habit. Jesus. I remember gone are the days I was going through hardship. I was going through a job season, nothing to eat or drink. And I went to church and God was moving me from the church. The pastor came and rolled up some money. And I said, I don't want it. He said, take it. I said, I do not want any money from you. He said, take it because you used to pay tithes. You see, tithes is powerful. So your tithes will speak for you. Even when God was moving me from the church, the pastor came. And he, people of God, if you really want to be blessed, if you really want to be blessed, you would think that they are not acknowledging that you are paying tithes. They acknowledge it, but your tithes is between you and God. It's between you and God. Hallelujah. I pray that any ministry that you are a part of, you begin to pay your tithes. It doesn't matter how small the ministry is or how big. Any ministry that you are connected to, where you are going and get your food and strength, you begin to pay your tithes there. And watch what God will do for you. Mighty God. Give God what is due to him. When you release to God, he will open your doors. Live right. Live clean. Hallelujah. My God. His mother taught him. So today I'm here to let you know when you open your heart to be a blessing, you will attract blessing. 
when you open your heart to be a blessing, you won't attract struggle. You attract blessing. When you look at Job, in the book of Job chapter 29, we're going in the Bible today, and I'm not rushing anything. Amen? Look at Job. You're going to flip you're gonna flip back because Job is right before Psalms. So we're going to flip back now to Job. Job chapter 29. My God. Job had some lyrics. Mm-hmm. Job had some serious lyrics. I don't know if he was a singer, but he had some lyrics. Job chapter 29. Let's start at verse 11. It says, When the ear heard me, then it blessed me. And when the eyes saw me, it gave witness unto me. Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him. So you see, we're going down to something. I want you to listen keenly to this message. Listen keenly to this particular scripture. Jesus. Listen keenly, people of God. When the hear heard me, it blessed me. When the eyes saw me, it gave witness to me. Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him. This is why we do charity. When I dig into the word of God, I raise my hand and worship God. Why? Because Job is telling us that there are some things that he did and it opened his doors. When the, hey, somebody help me to bless God. Somebody help me to bless God here today. Jesus, somebody help me bless him. We're talking Bible. We're not here to talk about anyone. We're not criticizing anyone. We are digging in the word of God. Job said, when the ear heard me, it blessed me. My God. Hey, when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me. Because I delivered the poor that cry. And the fatherless. And him that had none to help him. The blessings of him that was ready to perish. Came upon me. Oh. The blessings of him that was ready to perish. It came upon me. Because of my obedience to God. Give. And it will come back to you. Jesus. And I cause the widow's heart to sing for joy. He help even the widows. Who can stop El Shaddai? We will forever do charity. This is what God wants. Us to honor him with our substance. This is what God is saying to us today. To honor him with our substance. The word of God is speaking to us. He said, I caused the widows, the women that didn't have husband. He caused their heart to sing because he was a blessing to them. Many of us, we don't want to be a blessing to anyone. So we refrain from stretching forth our hands when it's time to give. Don't do that. Job was rich. And there was a time when he lost everything. But look what he's saying. This is his testimony. When was the last time you did something that moved God? Ooh. When was the last time you did something for someone that touched God? Remember Cornelius in the Bible. He was not even baptized yet. And the man fasted and prayed daily. With his entire household. He didn't do it by himself. And God sent Peter. To baptize him and his household. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Just by listening to the word of God. Are you living your life to please God? 
Jesus. The Bible declare. Job said, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was a robe as a diadem. I was eyes to the blind and feet was to, was I to the lame. So he was helping everybody. There's a scripture in here that reminds us that Job was like a king back in his days. Jesus. He said, I was a father to the poor. And the cause which I knew not, I search out. My God. Him, he's telling. You know, he was not just blowing his own horn. But he was saying, these are the things that God used me to do. That, those were his former service. Things that he did. My God, Jesus. One of the greatness he talked about, he said, when the hear heard me, it blessed me. When the eye saw me, it had respect for me. We're talking Bible people of God. If you really, the Bible tell how Job was wealthy. But these are the things that kept him being blessed. The things that he was secretly doing. This was his labor of love. Many of us, we refused to share. And it started in the home that we were raised in. Some people, they'll give you something and they'll, they'll give to you, but they have to be a part of the, yes, to celebrate it with you. They're going to buy you a meal, but they're going to sit right there and maybe help you to eat from it. They won't give you the money to go and buy the meal. No. They want you to sit down with them and they pay for the meal. That's not a blessing. That's selfish. That's not a blessing. He said he make the widow have joy in their heart. He was legs to the lame. He was eyes to the blind. So he helped people. My God. He said, I was a father to the poor. The cause which I knew not, I search out. And I break the jaws of the wicked and pluck out the spoil of, the of his teeth. It means that those who try to rob. Remember when, remember when Abraham, his brother was robbed. He, he gathered some of the men from his house and go and get everything back from the king. And the evil king said, Abraham, take the spoil and give me the man. Abraham said, no, I don't want nothing from you. I don't want you to say that you make Abraham rich. And David did the same thing too. They went to war and when they came back, they were robbed. Ah, David went with his men and robbed left, right and center and kill and destroy. And begin to bless these men, the ones that couldn't go because they were tired. We're talking Bible people of God. Job said, I pluck it out of their mouth, the wicked. So it's been a long time people have been getting robbed. Not just today. He said, then I said, I shall die in my nest. And I shall multiply my days as the sand. My root was spread out by the waters. And the dew lay night upon my branch. My glory was fresh in me. And my bow was renewed in my hand. Hey, may the Lord bless you here today. Jesus. May the Lord bless you here today. May the Lord remember you. Because of the good things that you did. Stop measuring what you're doing for other people. Because God is not measuring what he's giving you. Why? According to the word of God. He said if you give sparingly. You receive sparingly. If you give yes. In abundance. You'll receive in abundance. This is the word of God. If when you're giving, you're stingy, you're not going to get a lot. It is written. Oh, 
Jesus. Remember to be a blessing. That's why we do charity. We have El Shaddai wallet every month. My God. How many people have you helped to be great? Don't keep everything to yourself. God is waiting to open your doors. If you are, if you look at yourself as living a great life, have you helped someone to be next to you? Ah. They said that success without a successor is a failure. So if you are successful and you are the only person successful, no one else around you is not successful, then you are a failure. My God. Success without a successor is failure. If you are teaching and you are not training anyone, you failed. You failed. And this is why I'm here with the scripture. And I'll give it to you. I'll, I'll tell you, write things down. Why? Sometimes when people call me and they were telling me, I learned that right there on the platform, Pastor. You said it. It encouraged me because I don't remember. So it's a blessing that the Lord will use me to give to you so you can pour back in me. Many times, the other day I heard Sister Michelle ministering to me and she didn't realize she was ministering to me the things that God used me to pour out into her I said Lord I thank you yes so when you are doing something and you are good at it teach someone else the same thing you don't have to preach but you'll be there to intercede I might be preaching to you and I might be teaching you, but what you are getting is to strengthen others. Because you have a gift in you that needs to be birthed. My God. So I'm here to encourage you. Learn as much as you can. Paul said, take notes. In the book of Habakkuk, it also tells you to write things down. Learn from me. My God. Sister Dana, learn as much as you can. Sister Darrett, take as much as you can. It's not too much. My God. Words of wisdom. What you do for the people that are lower than you, I said it earlier, it will determine the treatment from God who is above you. So what you do, your position that you hold in life with the people that's beneath you, make sure the way you treat them is the way you know that God is going to treat you. <laughs> make sure you know this. The way you treat people is the same way God is going to treat you as a servant. The people that are lower than you, because of the position that you have. Be careful how you treat them. Because they belong to God. That's what this is saying. They belong to God. And if God placed you above these people to feed his sheep. Be careful what you feed them. Don't poison them. Ah! Don't poison what you're supposed to nourish. Don't poison who God sent for you to nourish. Don't destroy the people that God placed around you. Don't destroy them. Because you want God to nourish you. What did Job just said? Even in his hand. My God. Ah, Thank you Holy Spirit. He said my bow was renewed in my hand. Why? Because he was doing good to the people that was beneath him. So God renewed him. God strengthen him. I pray today that the Lord will strengthen you. I pray today that the Lord will strengthen you. I pray today that you will be strengthened. Oh Jesus. Mm. Treat people the way you want to be treated. If you want someone to open doors for you, then it's time for you to start opening doors for others. 
if you want if you're expecting someone to open doors for you then it's time for you to start opening doors for others if you want someone to be kind to you make sure that you are kind to others oh jesus what you do for others god will do it for you remember that whatever you do to people expect it from god so if you are kind to people god will be generous with you do good and it will come back to you give and it will come back to you press down shaken together in measures you will not have enough room to receive my god Let us look at Leviticus back into, we're still in the Old Testament. Let us go to the book of Leviticus. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. So it's the third book. Leviticus chapter 19. My God. Leviticus chapter 19, it tells us about the laws concerning personal conduct. Hey, big talk. Leviticus is telling us here about the laws of personal conduct, the way you conduct yourself. Let us see what it says. It says, thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor. Hey, hey. You see, I was talking about it earlier. Job said he snatched things out of people's teeth, out of the teeth of the wicked, and give it back to the poor. So now we are seeing where God is talking to us. He said, don't defraud your neighbor. Don't scam. Don't rob. Don't try to trick. Don't try to swindle any neighbor out of what they have. It's a sin. It's against God. He says, thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor. Neither rob him. The wages of him that had hired shall not abide with thee all night. You see, this is what I'm saying. When someone works for you, don't hold on to the money and tell them, come back tomorrow. Pay them up right now. It is written. Some people like to do that. Oh, I'll pay you next week. And they have the money. It's a sin. Now you see why some people don't get any blessings from God because the things that they are doing hold back their blessing. When someone works for you, pay them as soon as they are done. It's witchcraft. It is a form of witchcraft to hold on to what does not concern you. Here it is written, it said, Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. So when someone works for you, don't hold on to their wages until the next day. Finish the job, pay me. Pay me, I'm finished. Don't try to make me sweat for it. I already sweat for the money. You're trying to get yourself killed. Oh, Jesus. Let's go deeper. It says, thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall tear, thou shalt fear thy God. I am the Lord. It's done right there. And what, the, what is this called? Personal conduct. Law concerning personal conduct. The way you conduct yourself. You can drag yourself right to the pit of hell by your old habits. Now you see why some people don't get any blessings. Some people, they got money, but they are not blessed because money is not blessings. It's the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and add no sorrow. Some people have access to money, but they are not being blessed. Because when people work for them, they hold on to it. They curse people who are deaf. They put stumbling block in the way of those who are blind. Why? To make themselves look good. You know somebody can't see properly. Why you put that thing there? You want them to stumble over it. What the Bible is saying here. Stop being evil. Stop being cruel. 
Oh, Jesus. Many of you, you are victims of such circumstances. But today I pray that the Lord will make a way where there seems to be no way. Jesus. Bible said, you shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in the righteous shall thou judge thy neighbor. So you see, many of us, we look up to people because they have money. Stop it. Stop it. It's a sin. Oh, Lord, forgive me. It's time to repent. Many of us, that's how we were raised up to respect people because they have a couple of dollars. It said, be honest and don't scam your neighbor. Don't rob him. Don't hold on to people money when they work for you. Don't oppress others. You are not better than anybody. Just a different career. None of us are better than anyone. God places us in position. And when we fail the people, we fail God. Jesus. God places us in position and many times we fail God because of our being greedy. Oh, Jesus. Don't hold on to what belongs to someone else. Abraham was honest. Did you know that what belongs to someone else cannot make you rich? If you hold on to something that belongs to someone else, it cannot make you rich. It's not yours. It will be a burden. It cannot make you successful. And this is why there are times when, you see, this is when, when you work for someone and they don't pay you. They hold on to it. You better pray for them. Many times you will have to pass them, you have to pray for them. You pass them going through hardship. Why? Because that was a curse. Words of wisdom. I told you I'm coming back with it. My God. Don't allow the devil to rob you by letting you hold on to something that belongs to someone else. Give it to them. Set them free. Let your conscience set you free. Oh, Jesus. Whatever belongs to someone else will never make you rich. No, even if it's a host, it cannot make you rich. It's not yours. I'm here with the word. The raw, undiluted word of God. Jesus. The Bible said in the book of John, John chapter 4, The hour is coming. And now is it when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Today I pray. You see, if you're writing... It's John chapter 4 verse 23, Genesis chapter 14 verse 21, where Abraham refused to take the goods. And he told the king, I don't want you to tell anybody that you make me rich. So Genesis chapter 14, Leviticus chapter 19 tells us to be honest in when we're doing things and don't try to scam anybody from what God gave them. My God, we use Job chapter 29 verse 11 all the way to verse 18 mighty god thank you holy spirit and the next scripture is proverbs chapter 3 which tells us to honor the lord with our substance and if you don't want to remember anything take this from today's message remember rockefeller go and look up john rockefeller and it will tell you that his mother taught him how to pay tithes and that's why he is successful the all-time Rockefeller Center. Amen. 
Psalm chapter 5 and verse 12 tells us that God will bless the righteous with favor and surround them with a shield of love. And Exodus chapter 2 remind us that when you cry out to God, he remember you because of the covenant that he had with your food fathers. Today I came to tell you live righteous. And if you are in any error with any of these scriptures that we just talk about, it's time to repent. It's time to repent. God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. Open your mouth and pray this prayer. Lord, help me. Save me from myself. Many times it's our mindset, the things that we saw our parents did. Many of us, we saw our parents mistreat people that work for them. Speak down. The Bible said, no, no. When you treat people beneath your law, God will they drop your law. Be careful of the way you treat people because of your status. Nah. The Bible said we shouldn't have respect for people because they are wealthy. No, it's a sin. He give the rich riches. So they can be humble. He humbled them with riches. So when people are rich, it's supposed to be a form of humility. Not to brag. It's nothing to brag about. The Bible tells us right here. It's not something that we are supposed to brag about. It's called personal conduct. Oh Jesus. It's time for us to humble ourselves. Sister Debbie Eversley, we have to ask God. to. You see, many times the problems that we have is because of how we were raised. Our parents, you know, maybe because they were able to give us certain type of food to eat and live in a certain neighborhood and this and that. We think we are better than people, but no, that's not what the Bible said. He gave them riches to humble them. Many things could have happened when Jesus was on the cross. But only a few things happened. So people could prove that he was the true and living God. The son of God. So I'm here today to let you know. It is well. God is faithful. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for his goodness and his mercies. His name is Jehovah. People of God, listen to this. God will never give you more than what you can handle. So it is my prayer that whatever he placed, any burden that is placed before you, you execute very well. Jesus. Any burden that he has placed before you, it is my prayer that you'll be able to execute. According to to the New Testament, it tells us that the scriptures, all scriptures are given for inspiration and for correction. So we need correction daily in order to do right. This is why when you go to school, it doesn't matter how much you study. Sometimes it's just a little portion of the sentence is wrong, but it's still wrong. So we have to get correction. We go back and we study. So even in school, if you knew it all, you don't have to go to school. If you knew everything that you think you knew, why would you be in school? As much as we knew the Bible, when we went to Bible school, hey, hey, it was a whole different game. As much as you think you know the Bible, check yourself into Bible school. Some people never finish the first year. No! No! Some drop out and they went back. They drop out and they went back. Why? Because it's a school. That's what school does. It's there to twist things to make you smart. Twist the scripture. They do. They twist the scripture to see if you're paying attention. And just like maths. Some call it mathematics. They twist the answers to see if you're focused. If you knew everything, then you wouldn't have to go to school. So today I pray 
that whatever is lacking in your life, you will admit and acknowledge that you are short in some areas and you will repent and ask God to fill you up. I pray that you will be filled up today. As I fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up now. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of Fill it up and make me oh fill my cup, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I lift it up now. Hallelujah. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up. And make me all. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this powerful message that you have given us. Lord, we thank you for the words of wisdom. Lord, we thank you that we were able to be here today to take it in our ear gates. My God, you said, eyes have not seen. You said, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the plans you have for your people. And therefore, Lord, we are telling you we are ready. We are ready, O oh God, for the next move in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We are ready. We are marching to Zion. We are ready. We are ready. Lord, fill us up and make us whole. Any wicked thing that is in us, Lord God, we are asking you to move it. Anything in our home that does not glorify you, Lord, we are asking you to purge it. Holy Spirit, we ask you to move like a mighty rushing wind through our home and destroy anything that will contaminate our children. Hey, oh God, we are asking you to do something new for us. Fill us up, Lord, and let it be well with us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray with thanksgiving. Oh God, and for those people that are tithing in El Shaddai prayer tower, that send your tithes, we're asking your Lord to bless them. Fill them up, Lord God. Bless their finances. Oh, we ask you, Lord God, for divine protection. Protect their finances. Lord, we ask in your mighty God for healing. Heal them, oh God, in any area that they are sick. Any area that needs healing. Oh God, we are asking you to heal your tithers. Mighty God, and those that will sow seeds. Oh God, we are asking you for every seed that has been sown into El Shaddai. We are asking you, oh God, for germination to take place. We are asking for manifestation to take place. Lord, we are asking you to do new things for them. The spirit of newness shall be their portion. Ah! Pray for open doors. Bless them, O oh God. Let it be well with them. Everyone that stretched forth their hands to this ministry to bless it. From day one up until today, we are asking the Lord God, to keep me praying over their seed. Lord, I ask you to give me strength to continue to pray over your people's seed. To continue to pray over their seed. For those who are waiting to get married. For those who are waiting for opportunities. For those who are waiting for victory, for liberty. Lord God, I pray today. That their seed will germinate. Some are waiting for their status to be adjusted. I pray today Lord God for those seeds to germinate and come to life and bear fruit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord for those who are going through marital problems. For those who are going through divorce. For those who are separated. Lord I ask you to fix them. Oh God. Let it be well with them. Every broken home today, oh God, I ask you to fix it. Remember the children from broken homes. Remember the children from divorced marriages. 
Lord, remember them from broken marriage. Remember them, Lord God, from the homes that have been abused. Oh, Lord, I ask you to shake them up. Let it be well with your people today. Bless them, oh God, we are asking for the deliverance. Deliverance, let it be their portion. We're asking for healing. Oh God, we're asking for family reunion. We're asking for wedding anniversaries. We're asking for baby showers, bridal showers. Oh God, I ask you today to remember your people that are waiting on their prayers to be answered. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Even now, oh God, I ask you to remember the children. Let it be well with them. Bless marriages this year, Lord God. Bless them, O oh God. Bless the fruit of their wombs. My God, let allow your people to give birth, birth to business and ideas and ministries. Oh, education, bless them, my God. Some are waiting, O oh God, to travel to visit family. I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to open those doors. Open those doors. Fill up your people with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so they can move according to the word of God. Order their steps, Lord. Hey, Jesus. I pray for promotion, elevation. My God. New heights, deeper depths. Deep call it unto deep. So today, oh God, I pray for higher heights and deeper depths in their lives. My God, I pray, Lord God, that you'll provide for those who, are, who have not today. I pray for those who have nothing today. Somebody's crying. And Lord, I pray that you will touch this person right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray, oh God, for a touch, divine touch, touch. Touch, touch. Ah, divine touch, Lord. Bless them today. Remember them. You know what they're going through. I pray against food poisoning right now. Hey, Jesus, I pray against food poison. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray against food poisoning right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray about I destroy that food poisoning right now. Oh, that beast bite, I destroy it. I destroy that beast by it right now. I uproot it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray with thanksgiving. Someone is here struggling because they place witchcraft on you. I send it back to the sender and I curse it. I curse that spirit of witchcraft right now. And I send it back to the sender to torment them in the name of Jesus. Lord, today I place Saskia and her children before you. Saskia Abaroko Saya, I place your children before God. That there will be a transformation. It is finished. It is done. Ah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even now, Lord God, remember my children, wherever they are, the four corners of the earth, remember my grandchildren. Remember my father in Jamaica, Lord. Remember him. Draw him nearer to you, O God. Fill him up. As he age, let him age gracefully. As he get closer to you, let it be well with him. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it is done. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give glory to the Lord because he reigned. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. We give glory to the Lord. He reign. Jesus. 
my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now it's time for your offering. Whatever the Lord touch your heart to give, it's time for your offering. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. My God. Glory to God. It's time for your offering. If the Lord touch your heart to pay your tithes in this ministry, God bless your offering, Brother Devon. Thank you, Jesus. God bless your offering and your tithes. If the Lord touch your heart to pay tithes in this ministry, remember to pay your tithes. You're not doing it for anyone. You're doing it for yourself. I just gave you all those scriptures. How powerful it is to pay your tithes. Amen. And what God will do for you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. How powerful it is. To pay your tithes and your offering. You will never lack. Hallelujah. You will never lack any good thing. Oh, somebody sowing for new beginning. May the Lord bless you in your new season. Hallelujah. May the Lord open those doors. Uh, may the Lord, may you come on this platform and testify because of what the Lord has done. A lot of people are afraid to testify. They, I don't think it's embarrassed. I think it's pride. But I'm here to let you know when you testify what God did for you, it will encourage someone else. Amen. So for those of you who pay tithes in this ministry, expect a miracle before this month is out. Today is the 11th day of September. Ah. Uh, I pray for you. For those of you who tied in El Shaddai prayer tower, expect a miracle. God is about to honor your tithes. The Bible said, Lord, I respect for them because of what he promised their forefathers. So today I pray, my God, that your offering will, will generate income in your home. My God. Ah, Jesus. I pray that your offering will generate income in your home. Jesus. Glory to God. My God. Somebody bless the Lord. Bless God. Mm. Tanisha, may the Lord bless you. Glory be to God. May the Lord bless your people of God. Listen, we are collecting building fund for El Shaddai Prayer Tower. Very soon we will have good news. So I want you to know we are still collecting building fund. God is faithful. He has been faithful unto us. And good news is on the way for El Shaddai Prayer Tower. I encourage you to participate in our building fund. You will never regret it. I am making this announcement. Remember our building fund. We are collecting donations for our building fund. And I am looking forward at some point that we can have an event and it will be in Jamaica and it's char it's a charitable event for the building fund we will I don't know what we're gonna do if we're gonna have a cookout in Jamaica or something but we will find a way probably to do it on the beach as usual because we don't have a place yet but we will have a building fund 
um, cookout. It will be in, yes, in association with El Shaddai Prayer Tower, a cookout. Sister Jolene, I'm going to need your assistance because you have soldiers in Jamaica. We will need your soldiers. So I'm going to ask you to speak to your soldiers. We will be needing soldiers. We need soldiers for Jesus Christ. We will have a cookout and it will be, it. all proceeds will go towards the building fund. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God honor and praise. Glory to God. We will have a, it sounds funny. We are doing charity, but now we are going to have a cookout and the proceeds will go towards. So I don't know how we're going to do it. If the, if the food will be free and the drinks for sale or the drinks for sale or the drinks free and the food for sale. I don't know how, how that works, but we will have a cookout and it will be in Jamaica. And the proceeds will go towards our building fund. We need a building and we are collecting funds. So we have to step out and make it happen. People of God, we are stepping out to make it happen. All proceeds from the building fund, from the cookout will go towards the building fund. Amen. I'm thankful to God. I pray many of you will be able to come and participate in what the Lord is doing. I know the um, Sister Shelley, Sister Latoya, Sister Kean, they will be right there all the way from Kingston. But we will be doing so. And proceeds will go towards the building fund. Uh, Beverly, I wish you could come. I don't know. But it is my prayer that God will open a way where there seem to be no way so you could come. May the Lord continue to bless you and your family. Yesterday I was praying for your daughter Latoya, Lati, for the Lord to provide her with a decent job. And I also found myself speaking in her life for God to give her a husband. I don't know where that came from, but yesterday I was praying for Lati, Sister Kayan as my witness, and I was also asking God to give a Lati a husband. We yes, I will need your soldiers. We are we are we are going to do it. You know, we will we and it will it will come to pass. And if you add I'm not giving out any dates yet. I don't know when, but this thing will happen in Jamaica. It would have been good if we could have done it here as well. Amen. Hallelujah. But we are doing it for the building fund. Glory to God. My God. It will be well. It would be good if we could get a hotel conference room. But, you know, in those conference rooms, they don't want you to bring any food there. But when we are in Florida, we have poolside. <laughs> so we can bring all the food to the poolside. I love Florida. And yes, and the, uh, the last hotel we stayed in the Sonesta, we were able to bring food in. So that could work. So we're going to have to figure out something to do in America. And then also in Jamaica, we will do it. Amen. We will figure it out. We have to do it. It's it's in pro all proceeds will go. We need money for the church. People of God. We God is opening door for us to get a church and we need money. We need everything that you when you walk into a church that you see, we need everything to be in this church. So we are asking for help. Amen. God bless you and your family. I thank God for this moment. People of God, it's time for your offering. We are collecting your offering. Don't leave with it. Why? Many people said, I want to donate this. I want to give that. This is my offering. And then you found out you jump off of social media and didn't do it. It's your blessings. Amen. May the Lord continue to bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you his peace. Sister Petronia, Bailey, I know you have a lot of a lot of soldiers also in Jamaica, especially down there in Olaba Bay. We will need your soldiers to come as well.
people of God, listen, we are doing it for our church. We're not doing it to put in our pocket. Yes, we need suppliers. Yesterday, I was talking to my daughter in the UK, and she said to me that she has been praying for God to send people to help, to help out with the, the ministry. She, she said, yes, I've been praying, and I thank God because she said, I've been praying and I've been fasting and asking God to send people to the ministry. Sister Pauline, I know that you have our back as usual. Even if you're just going to pray for us, Pauline Gordon, I know that you stand tall with El Shaddai Prayer Tower. That much I know. And I can, yes, I can close my eyes when it comes to you, knowing that you are praying for us. So we are planning this. And I'm thankful to God that it's coming. It is coming. It is coming. It is coming in the name of Jesus Christ, where people can come and get their deliverance. That's mostly what it is. People can come and feel God. People can come and experience the operation, a demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're going to have um, like a cookout here in America, and we'll also have one in Jamaica. We just need a nice location. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, sometimes they have things done in the park because you can do it at the park. But I want a place where it's covered, you know, to prevent all that um, bacteria and dust and all of that. The Sonesta that we had in Florida, we could cook there. They have a deck where barbecue, grill, and everything, we couldn't do things right there in Florida where we went the last time. It was such a blessing. Amen? Mm-hmm. So, these are the things that God is doing in this time. We're collected. I I'm excited. There is so much to talk about, but I will give it to you at the right time. God is opening door for El Shaddai Prayer Tower. We need to collect money so we can take care of the building fund. Amen? Take care of the stuff for the building. I'm excited. I am ex I'm ecstatic right now. I am doing backflips. <laughs> I can hardly walk, but I'm doing backflips because of what God is doing for us. <laughs> Woo! It is such a great thing to serve the Lord. And I'm thankful. I am grateful. I don't know about you, but honestly... It's one of the best things that happened in my life since I came to Christ. And is this where we are? We, our, our current situation, it's one of the best things that ever happened. So people of God, don't hesitate. We are collecting donations for the building fund. And I'm excited. If the Lord touched your heart to bless the ministry because you enjoyed the message, go ahead and do so. You can use Zell. PayPal or Cash App. The number is 860-634-8557. God bless you. Hallelujah. You don't know how happy I am. How good it makes me feel that God is doing this for El Shaddai. Oh, Jesus. It's such a blessing. It is such a blessing. My God. Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Ah! My God, it's such a blessing. So, bear in mind that we are looking forward for the next move of God in El Shaddai. Stay with me. Don't leave. Just stay with me. And let us do this together. Amen. Once again, it's breakfast with Jesus. You know, this is your girl. Yes. Reverend Dr. Joyce Lynn Radigan. At your service with the word of God. Amen. God bless you all. My time is up. I have to go. And I'm keeping it real right here i am keeping it real i'm giving you the word of god i am not going to lie to you to make you feel good i'm going to tell you the truth and when the church doors are open it will still be the truth i'm inviting each and every one of you to visit jamaica when i'm going so we can 
tear down Satan kingdom together. When we go to Jamaica, it's a whole different level. Whenever we are in Jamaica, it's a whole different level. So for those of you who have access to travel, when we are going, I'll announce it ahead of time so you can prepare yourself. If you are interested in coming with us, you can send me a message on WhatsApp at 860-634-8557. If you are in United States of America, England, Canada, wherever you're located, and you want to visit Jamaica when we are there, we'll be there for a while just let me know send me a message on whatsapp 860-634-8557 many times things have to start in the place that you came from you have to go back to your hometown to receive your blessing and this is what we are doing with el shaddai amen we're going to the hometown and we're going to pray we're going to pray up a storm amen we're going to loose ourselves from every trap of the enemies amen every tormented spirit some people live in foreign countries but they are torment and the spirit is coming from back home so we are going down there to loose some things in the spirit amen we are going down there to uproot some things in the spirit and watch what god will do and remember whatever you do god will pay you whatever you give he will bring it back to you god bless every hand that will stretch forth to be a blessing in this time in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will testify of what the Lord did for you because you gave. God bless you. My time is up. I have to go.